Faraz Shaukutali. And a warm welcome and a very good evening to you. This is News 9 Live. My guest this evening is from a new party. Well, it's not really new, but from this morning. Uh, the NPP, the National People's Power Party. And uh, we've got here with the ex uh, Executive Committee member uh, and a former member of Parliament, of course, Dr. Nalinda Jatissa. Very good evening to you, Dr. Jatissa. Good evening to us. Thank you very much for coming here. And uh, we saw that uh, the NPP had live coverage on uh, television and so on for your convention. Uh, obviously, the people are taking notice of your party. And time after time, I've had various other members of your party come here. And it seems to me that the uh, NPP is uh, smelling victory, political victory. Yes. And therefore, I want to ask you, does your party have a plan, a real plan for this country? Yes. Before that, uh, I would like to express my gratitude uh, to your channel, Sirasa uh, Maharaj, uh, this uh, TV channel, to broadcast live in our convention in this morning. Yes. And this is my first interview as a National Co Executive Committee member of National People's Power. So, uh, why why we uh, held that national convention in this yeah. morning? That is to your answer to to your question. Mm. Right. We have published the rapid response to overcome current challenges. <coughs> oh, that's that brilliant. Facing. Shall yes. we, shall I, can yes. I just, uh, can we get a clip of that, please? Um, that's the, that's the book. The uh, rapid response to overcome current challenges, which is exactly what I've been asking you. Uh, I hope you've got that uh, there. Uh, you know, cover my face, it's better. There you go. Uh, and So, uh, that, that, yes. that's, the, that's your book. And uh, that's in English. Yes, in English, and uh, we are publishing it in three languages, in okay. Tamil and English. And uh, actually, uh, we have touched the all faces, all uh, issues mm. we are currently facing. Mm. The economic problem, as well as the social and the political problem. Mm. As well, uh, the diplomatic problem, what we are facing deeply mm. at the moment. Mm. Uh, it's an approach, I mean, I have, I mean, we are introducing to the country a comprehensive <coughs> comprehensive national plan on economic development right. development and uh, how as a country how we are going to face the government debt crisis right in next five years and we mainly focus on how to eliminate fraud corruption and waste mm. in the political system you see uh, this is I think this is the main problem in the country. Mm -hmm. uh, for last, I mean, 30 to 35 years, our debt uh, increased up to now. Uh, in the in end of this year, it may increase up to uh, se 17 trillion rupees. 17 trillion. In 1950, we had only 1 billion rupee debt. Right. So it's it now 17,000 17, billion. Right. So 17 trillion right now. 17 trillion. And uh, you know, you know, our uh, foreign reserve goes down to 1 billion dollars, 1,000 million dollars. Right. So now we are facing a lot of problems. Yeah. So 1,500 containers are trapped mm. in the hub. Mm. So people are in the queues to uh, purchase essential foods. Mm. I mean, the drugs, cement, gas, oil, anything, mm. Mm. sugar. So we have to face this problem and we have, I mean, we have a courage and faith. We can uh, get the country up. So you, you have courage and faith, but in, in real terms, uh, how are you going to address just, I don't want too many details, yeah. but in broad terms, how will you address the current uh, uh, foreign exchange crisis, the economic uh, part of it. Yes, to 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 uh, solve that problem, we think that we have to uh, change mm. the political system. Mm. It includes the corruption, waste, and uh, the fraud. Mm. If we let's see, if we uh, if we can eliminate the corruption 
and if we can maintain the law yeah and uh, order in the country mm -hmm. we can open up the investment door right to come to dollars into the country okay why the investors are going from sri lanka to the, to vietnam right this the the main two reasons are here they can't go forward without corruption and they can't uh, see the security on their investment so if we can if we can uh, establish the corruption free political system in top level mm -hmm. not in the bottom level in the top level and if we if we can maintain the law and order mm. so we can we, we can uh, invite investors to invest here that is one one door mm -hmm. other one we have a uh, lot of uh, businessmen in diaspora tamil and singhala mm. actually uh, these people i think most of them are over 60 years mm -hmm. and they can uh, not investment as investment they can do something for the country at the end of their life i mean the yes. last stage so so they, can, they, <coughs> they they are willing to do it and, and they But have they the can experience see when when they see the uh, waste stage in the political system mm. they can't uh, bring any coin any dollar to the country mm. so that's why we mainly focus on the political to change in the political system mm -hmm. so if we can uh, clear it the clear the environment so then we can uh, see the economic development now in the last election you all got about what about 3% of the vote yes okay uh, is it how plausible uh, in practical is it to imagine that you all will double it and say 6% uh i mean it is two years back in the general election yeah mm -hmm. but now, has this government failed miserably so much that you all will be able to take your 3% become 6% now no i mean now we are expecting uh, at least local government or the provincial council election right then we can see but in the progress you know it, what the, what people are thinking over this political system in the larger uh, districts and so on mm -hmm. um, where there are many seats say 20 seats mm -hmm. or whatever yeah then perhaps you can because 6% is you know uh, you you may be able to get but what about in let's say i i'm going to note this let's say in the kalutra district mm. go about 7 or 8 seats there 10 seats 10 seats okay so can, is it possible to get 6% i mean if you want to get to make a difference you need to get over so this 10% time, actually if uh, the people uh, send 30 to 40 uh, npp members into the parliament in next general election mm. to the opposition we can't solve these problems the, the unless you have the 30 40 i mean we have now we are in a stage that now now we need a power yeah. to change the country to uh, develop the country and to give the prosperity to the people and to uh, overcome this corruption problem and to maintain the good diplomatic relations with other countries mm -hmm. so being opposition members of 30 or 40 in the parliament I think now this is not the stage. I mean, the the current the country is in the dip very difficult situation when you see in the history. So uh, we have to do a lot to get it up. Uh, but this is um, what somebody. Thank you very much for your question. Zero double seven two three hundred three zero five card coming up on your screen. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, tell Dr. Uh, Jatis uh, to go to the outstation public and convince them. Mm. Generally speaking, in the Western Province, we know what you're talking about. That's quite true, isn't it? D Non-urban areas in this country yeah. do they honestly understand the level of corruption, wastage, and so on? Because the cost of living out there is much cheaper than here. Thank you very much for your comment. And uh, as a party, we have started. that we called gamen patangamu start okay. from the village mm -hmm. and our members and our party leaders are going village by village and from uh, by house by house to acknowledge the people actually this time uh, we 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 don't want to talk much you want to do action we have to no no we we have to listen to the people ah okay they tell everything yeah and the a, end of the discussion we have to tell the uh, the the lineup of the solution mm. 
nothing else. Okay, the lineup of the solution. So you you have a plan, you and so on. Who is the um, going to be the prime ministerial candidate? Who's going to be the finance minister's candidate? Who will be the foreign minister? Who will be the Ministry of Agriculture? Because obviously these are very important items. Right, and education and the health. And, and health, health. yes. Yeah. Right. So, so uh, tell us, I suppose you're a doctor, so no prizes for guessing if you go there. We won't be complaining. But tell me, you tell me. No, that's why uh, today morning we have introduced the National Executive Committee consists of 73 members of the NPP. Mm. So uh, they will work for the country and I mean they will work in their separate sectors. Yeah. In near future, you can see who are responsible for the agriculture, finance, uh, health, education, etc. So you can't name them yes. now, but you can in a, maybe in a few yes. weeks. I don't want to uh, name in this moment. No. Let them work. I mean, as a, I mean, in the health sector, there are uh, three, four members uh, relating to the health sector in this mm. National Executive Committee. They will work in the future. So, uh, I mean, according to their capabilities and the political experience, <coughs> we can nominate one people next uh, five, six months. So we, yeah. All right, on that note, let's go for a quick break and um, look at the headlines for this evening's primetime news. We'll see you on the other side of the break. With Faraz Shaukutali. And welcome back to Newsline Live. I'm in conversation with Dr. Nalinda Jayathissa from the NPP, the National People's Power Party. Now then, um, many people are asking us this question, so I'll ask you. They're asking whether the NPP, apart from your plans for good governance and to recover the economy and so on, and, and to sustain the economy and boost various things, what plans do you have, real plans, to uh, recover the looted money, proceeds from crime. Right, it's our main uh, target and uh, it's a challenge actually hmm. because uh, I can't guess the actual number but I think personally we have lost more than 35 billion. Rupees or dollars? Uh, dollars. 35 no. billion dollars. Yes. You but see, our, our total our debt GDP, is... Yes, our GDP is nearly 90 billion dollars. Yes, but 33 billion is the that total debt. Yes, yes. The official that official debt. That is, that is, uh, I mean, if it's, we, you can imagine that we have lost four treasure, tre treasure, I mean, four... We've, uh, a big treasure. treasure yeah, we big lost. treasure, yes. Yeah. In four years, in consecutive four years. My goodness. Yes. So, I mean, when we when we will be in the government, we can, I mean, we ensure the people in our side, in political side, we will not allow the corruption, mm -hmm. right? Then we'll, we, 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 we plan to uh, form a constitutional and a good legal framework to eliminate it. And uh, how, how we going, how we are going to recover the stolen money or assets. I, I, we, we're running out of time, but yes. I, I need to ask you several questions. Uh, there's intense interest from our uh, viewing public today. Uh, one of them is, uh, what is your take, the NPP's take, on private university education? Yes, now we are in the global situation. Yeah. At, at, at the end, the government should ensure the citizens right yeah so for a certain uh, period yeah. we have to allow the private universities mm -hmm. now at the moment we have 15 degree awarding institutions in the country yes but you know b b dr jati says you know yes. um, around 330,000 to 350 students join the education system every year mm. but by the time they then uh, it's time for them to go to university. The state has only 30,000 places. The private yes. places have 15,000. Right. 45,000 plus 114 in vocational training. We, this is not enough for our economy to grow up. Right. That's why we can't close all uh, 
private degree awarding institution advance. So we have to expand our aim. The, the aim of the government is our government is to expand the uh, education and higher education sector in the government side. As so at the moment, yeah. the sim simultaneously, we we are uh, strictly supervising the private sector and private universities. Right. That's why I say at the end of the day, we have to uh, in the entrust the people mm. ab about the education, whether the mode is from the government or the public or the, the private mm -hmm. or the public private partnership. So when we uh, uh, I mean when we expand yeah. the ch chances opportunities to the uh, students, mm. we think that uh, most of the people we, we, we can uh, get the most of the students to the government universities mm. and we can't stop the students who are going overseas. Indeed. And now uh, we have to come to it with several questions as to why I'm not asking you this question so I am asking you the question. What's your take? What, uh, Mr. Anur Kumari Desanayaka, your wonderful uh, man in uh, parliament, he's like, a, he's like a folk hero now. Uh, you know, he's Mr. Corruption Buster. Now, Corruption Buster AKD has said some details about this uh, Yuga Danavi, yeah. New Fortress Energy transaction. What's the problem? Yes, this is the stolen or hidden uh, agreement between uh, the midnight agreement. Yes, the government of the Democratic Social Republic of Sri Lanka as the sailor and the NFE Sri Lanka Power Holding LLC as the buyer. Right. Hmm? This was signed in uh, September 17th, 2021. Mm. And uh, you see, this is sale and purchase agreement. But on, there are several cabinet papers uh, regarding this Yuga Danavi Kerala PTA power plant. Mm. On September, September 6th, Basil Rajapaksha as the finance minister mm. submitted a cabinet paper that to sell 40% uh, of shares of the treasury, hmm. not the whole West Coast company. Yeah. But in 40% ah, of the treasury holding. Yes, treasury holding. In a 36 uh, page of this agreement, yeah. that uh, LECO has 18.18% of shares of this West Coast. Uh, EPF has 27.04% mm. and Lakdhanavi has 4.77% of so shares. So it's 40% of? 40% of Secretary of the Ministry of Finance acting on behalf of the government of Sri Lanka. So they, they have the, 50%? Yes. The cabinet approved to sell 40% of the shares held by the treasury, right. not the whole West Coast. Right. And they have granted the approval to sign an agreement with New Fortress Energy Company, right. not with the NFE Sri Lanka Power Holding Limited. I see. So this is, uh, I mean, different to the cabinet uh, approval made on 6th September. It also happened on a much smaller scale uh, at the SEC. Yeah. And five million rupees was allocated for one thing, it went somewhere else, but that's another thing. And Can you it. see this, uh, this uh, news, the NFE Sri Lanka Power Holding LLC, mm registered in Delaware mm. on February, in February this year. Right. It has uh, only $300 value at capital. the beginning, yeah. capital. Well, okay, but you know, special purpose vehicles are all used all over the world. Yes. But is there any reference in this agreement mm. that although the special purpose vehicle is being used, that the financial resources are coming from the bigger company, from New Fortress Energy. I can't. I mean, I can't say directly because we we we, we thought earlier mm. that NFE NFE is responsible for this agreement, mm. but according to the agreement, it's not like that. So we don't know about this uh, registered company, the NFE Sri Lanka Power Holding. So what you're saying is that's not in the cabinet paper. Yes, not in the cabinet paper. Mm. And uh, another issue, what we raised in uh, the 30, 35th page of this agreement, mm. you see uh, the two witnesses, the four witnesses there, mm. but uh, on from from the Sri Lankan side and the American side, mm. 
these uh, signatures mm. are recognized by one witness okay. he is uh, mr mmc ferdinand ferdinandes he is okay. uh, now he his designation stated he has the advisor of the minister of finance mm. but uh, you know he is now the chairman of uh, ceb and now when uh, the lng the the, the kerala pt is uh, functioning the ceb is purchasing the electricity mm. uh, produced in that power plant right so this is actually very much secret as well uh, the is suspicious this fishy is it suspicious agreement right made between these two company the one company and the one uh, the uh, and, and, and and is this the basis upon which you've gone to the supreme court what's We, the basis of that that is uh, without the consideration of the whole cabinet mm -hmm. they have uh, signed agreement mm -hmm. the cabinet approved the treasury secretary to enter into agreement with this company and with the consent of the cabinet mm -hmm. that's a problem and we we can see the mass corruption here yeah and by this secret agreement mm. they are selling the geopolitical situation or geopolitical uh, stance of the country i mean i i heard that by 2050 mm. all ships in this world should be transformed into lng ah okay yes, in by 2050 so the all uh, big vessels are converting now how long is the agreement for this is for uh, 10 years mm. but they can extend according to their mutual understanding and uh, i think that they are going to take the opportunity of our country to sell lng to the ships which is, should be the opportunity of us our country yes opportunity our, our country is uh, grabbing by 2 uh, 3 persons or their personal interest that's a problem so we think that's why they are they 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 hide this agreement and they have signed it in the midnight mm. and they didn't uh, put into the parliament or the even the cabinet that's a main problem and that is you you maintain that that's against the the rules yes at at least we have procedures yeah we have rules and we have traditions the mm. country when the, when we go in the country mm. but all the traditions uh, and the norms are violated in this agreement are you able to say who's who who is uh, held responsible who do you re hold responsible finance minister should be there mm -hmm. with his company his his uh, his uh, two or three friends okay i uh, have read it on the one newspaper that uh, one former provincial council member and the one uh, uh director of a uh, big company mm. is be behind basil rajapaksha but i don't know i can't say exactly when, when you say the man, the minister of finance should be there you mean that's his uh, responsibility as a cabinet minister to ensure the fairest deal for the country but this is uh, actually relating to the power and energy sector mm. so we have a power minister and an energy minister so why why is the yeah. finance minister involved is it because of the money obviously yes that's a problem that's a problem i mean this that that power and energy ministers are conducting some uh, procedures mm. for international tenders mm. they have started office and they have called the international tenders but suddenly finance minister entered into the scene and he has submitted that cabinet paper huh? my dear my dear it all seems to be very bad news but well yes. done on uh, the birth of the npp uh, today and uh, good luck with that thank you, thank you very thank much you. for being uh, part of uh, newsline live dr nalin the jat this uh, that's the way it was on newsline live take care have a wonderful week ahead of you and as always god bless you